so the there is a uh, breaking news uh this one just came out before i wanted to do recording uh there is a landing ship uh uh, is unknown yet uh, the current uh, identity of the ship is not known yet but uh, it's apparently get, got hit south of the village of uh, Katsi Valley so uh, Katsi Valley is a uh, let me zoom in a bit more uh, this this little you no know, village over here and there is video footage of it uh, of a ship getting hit with a uh, smoke and then uh, there's burning and there's also rumors that it's already sunk uh, based on someone's comments I believe I saw uh, I don't know on Twitter or is it on uh, I'm not sure where so basically uh, this is an issue so uh, tentatively Raiba uh, the pro-Russian source reported that um, there is NATO reconnaissance aircraft uh, that was flying while this happened and uh, there is currently no comments from the Russian Defense Ministry just yet regarding this issue in fact I, I don't even have Russian Defense Ministry comment on the previous vessel that was hit and sunk by the uh by this uh unmanned surface drones from the Ukrainian side. So I'm not going to expect the Russians to talk about it uh, because uh, they just want good news. Uh, they just want good good PR right now. I don't think they want to talk about it. Hello everyone. This is Defense Politics Asia, and uh, this is the summary for the day of seven hundred and twenty for the thirteenth of. February. So we move on. Uh, over at the Kherson front, uh, at the Kherson front, the Ukrainian forces continue uh, to have a presence at Krinky. Uh, however, they are they are still getting bombarded uh, along this along the river as the boat comes. Uh, so it remains to be a very very uh, weird issues. And uh, there is a flag of a Ukrainian flag that is planted on the top of a water tower. So uh, a lot of people uh, watched military summaries video and told me that this is a uh, this is actually a drone planting the flag onto the water tower. Personally, I didn't see the video. I reported this based on information from Deep State UA, and uh, Deep State UA only mentioned about uh, the flag being raised on the water tower. So which is why I do not know about it. So so yeah okay so no that's that what that's what it is we will continue to monitor in that sense the ukrainian defense ministry continue to report that the russians are attacking krinky and uh so that's about it they said that there's only one attempt so that's unusual uh usually they say that uh, the russians tried a lot more and of uh, zooming out uh there is also another lancet strike uh being being uh joe located north of Lvovy. Uh, the Lancet strike hit an artillery gun, uh, so this is a bit of a distance. The Lancet, so this geolocation location just proved that the Lancet are still uh, hunting for Ukrainian forces uh, that is supporting the zone in Krinky. So everything around this semicircle is going to be hunted. In fact, even more than that because uh, the the lancer can actually fly really really far away so uh we, we move on away uh from the Kherson front uh over at the zaporizhia front uh on the nikopo region uh russian defense ministry mentioned that they actually uh inflicted losses on uh, ukrainian forces at nikopo so nikopo is actually this city opposite of the zaporizhia nuclear power plant and um yeah i'm not sure uh, if this is a precursor uh, to a possibility that the Ukrainians may try to go over to tr across the Dnipro River, um, please be mindful also that the Dnipro River no longer looks like this on this satellite imagery. Uh, it's now a very narrow river because uh, the, of the destruction of the dam over at Nova Kahovka. So it might be more possible to cross the Dnipro River than it was previously. Uh, so, but tentatively, we shall continue to monitor and uh, see how this progress. We move, uh, we move towards the Orykiv sector. This is Orykiv, and uh, this is the Orykiv sector. At this sector, the Russian forces uh, continue their offensive in this area here. Mostly, uh, mostly is positional. The Russians are attacking Robotine and also at Verbove. Uh, there is also reports by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry of Russia's attacking on the eastern part of Malatomashka. Information, Ukrainian Defense Ministry attack east of Malatomashka. So this is very, very interesting. And uh, geolocation of a uh, Mi-24 helicopter, uh, 
uh, on the Ukrainian side was destroyed uh, just off Robotine. So uh, the the he helicopter was allegedly shot down by an ATGM, an anti-tank guided missile from the Russian side. And uh, uh, this cannot be verified just yet uh, what it is actually. Uh, so we will continue to monitor and uh, see uh, if the U Russian Defense Ministry will actually talk about it. Uh, tentatively, I haven't really seen the Russians talk about a shooting down of a helicopter. So we will see how this progress. And uh, we move on to the Velika Nova Circle sector. This Velika Nova Circle, and uh, this is the Velika Nova Circle sector at the Zaporizhia front. Russian forces are also operating or or active in this region here. We're fighting reported at Prione, Staromayoske, and Uruzaini. So this one gave me some kind of feeling that it might be something bigger, but I'm not sure because if you look at this very report. Uh, the southern, the Vostok group of forces actually attack in multiple locations. Prione, Vladomirivka, uh, Vladono, uh, Vodian, uh, Urzaine, Prishestivka, Pr and Uruz, uh, Staromayoske. This is actually uh, quite big because if you zoom out, this is exactly where they are attacking. So this is uh, Vladomirivka. Uh, north of Mikioske towards Vodian, towards Prashestivka, Uruzaini, Staromayoske, and Prione. It looks like an offensive. It looks like it. The number of locations that are, they are attacking at one time seems a bit big, but we will need time to verify if this is actually an uh, actual offensive. But somehow that report, that paragraph, just gave me uh, some feeling that it seems to be. Uh, just off uh, Velika Nova Silka, uh, just off uh, the western part of uh, Vremivka, there is a new location of Lancer attack on the uh, Ukrainian self propelled artillery. So, so this uh, this artillery got destroyed uh, by the Lancer. It just basically just hit in. So, yeah, it look it zooms in and uh, the feet were cut off and boom, it hits. So this is a uh, so this is another issue and uh, for those that are wondering uh, if you want to look at these footages you can actually search for this channel called DPA archive uh, this is a new channel where I use it to uh, stash all this video footage that I can then put onto the mapping so uh, yeah and, uh, if you want to assess the ma this mapping of course DPA uh, DPA patron or coffee boosty locals whatever uh, if you support financially uh, you you will be able, on the officer level you'll be have access to this mapping so uh over at the Donetsk front as i mentioned the russians attack precise tifka uh, towards vodian and uh, at volody mirivka and the novo mihalivka region uh, they are also attacking from the eastern part towards the center of novo mihalivka the russians are attacking boyeda as well as uh Giyogivka. Giyogivka, the ukrainians counter attack over at krasnohorivka and at Giyogivka. So this is the strategic situation uh, over on the Donetsk front. And uh, so I have already mentioned the ones uh, in, on this area here might be part of a bigger offensive. Now we focus on the Marinka sector of the Donetsk front. And uh, in this area here, over at the Novo Mihalivka region, the Russian forces have conquered the, the entire eastern part and they are heading towards the center of Novo Mihalivka. So this battle is still ongoing. We shall continue to monitor to see how this progress. Uh, and uh, further up north, the Russians are attacking Boyeda and uh, and towards Yogivka. Ukrainians are counter-attacking. So there's no more front line change regarding this area here. Actually, I forgot to change the front line in this area here. Uh, let me fix it quickly. It looks like this. Damn it. Uh, okay, here. And... Uh, 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 yeah, so I fixed it. So, yeah, so th because that uh, that change is actually from yesterday. So this is a situation. There is no location of uh, Russian tanks shelling uh, Ukrainian forces at uh, Boyeda. So, and uh, these are using tanks as artillery of doing a fire support mission or, or fire mission on uh, Ukrainian forces from a far distance away. So, uh, it, it's a rather um, boring footage, in my opinion. A lot of things is, is in uh, this IR mode, uh, infrared mode. 
so everything is gray and the humans are white explosions are white so something like this uh so yeah i'm not going to show you too much later you know youtube don't like me so i don't want youtube to don't like me so uh, moving on to the adfk front so this is the adfk front the russian forces continue their adfk offensive with fighting reported towards novo kalinove nevelsky in the north of adfk from opine as well as against the uh in the north of spartak against the air defense a uh, former air defense base which is a ukrainian stronghold so of uh, of significance is the northern uh northern part of adfk where the russian forces have effectively created a operational encirclement of the ukrainian forces at adfk because the main road at Lestokine is now cancelled uh it cannot be used right now uh, they they can go to the coke plant uh, of course they can they can go go buy some coca cola but uh, they can't get in they can't get into the rest of the adfk unless they go through south of Lashtokine towards the kimik region so this is the kimik region this is the kimik neighborhood or the ninth district they can actually go in this direction through a smaller road uh, but this road is definitely going to be swarming with fpv drones and whatnot so it's going to be extremely difficult to use and uh, so so this is the current situation over in the north the russians are also moving north uh north westward towards the coke plant they are trying to expand the control around this area particularly controlling the access the entrance uh, of the this uh 0542 road uh, which is the the road of life for adfk so this is a current russian plan and uh the fact that they actually already taken the entire uh western road around this region here is a uh, pretty amazing given the the speed of progress is really 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 fast and uh, in the south the russian forces break out from opitne heading towards the southern neighborhood that the russians have conquered previously the russians are also heading in this direction creating some some kind of pincer movement and the ukrainian forces that is holding up uh, in this stronghold uh, is going to be encircled so the only way is to quickly run away and uh, there's not a lot of ways to run away so if you zoom in further you can see that there's only a dirt road that they can use or rather the forest trail and they have to follow this forest forest trail quickly to get out and uh they that's probably about it because the russians are already here very soon they will reach this forest and then this road will be gone and then if they try to go up this uh go go up this uh forest the russians are already here uh in the, in the northern part of this neighborhood so there is no good way uh the only way is to run now if they don't run now uh then yeah they're going to be pow's or they're just going to be dead so we move on away from the adfk front so that's all from the adfk front into the new york front at the new york front uh the the Sersky offensive continues with fighting reporter at shumi and at uh at, at pivdna the russians counter attack over at new york so this is the current situation uh, over at the new york front and uh it looks like this front line will be activated in the in uh in view of Sersky offensive uh this is the offensive i gave Sersky because he launched his offensive immediately after uh, uh, being appointed as the commander in chief of the ukrainian armed forces because this offensive don't exist previously and uh, it looks like a desperate attempt to distract the forces of russia and i forgot what i was talking about uh because i just went out uh, to send resupply to the ukrainian forces i mean i mean i bring umbrella to my family you know they are stuck in the rain so bakhmut front yeah if i'm not wrong bakhmut front this is bakhmut city and uh, this is the bakhmut front and uh, at the bakhmut front uh the russian forces are still continuing their bakhmut offensive this time around the, there's no more fighting uh, in the andreevka region or kodumivka the Ukrainians are uh, conducting their counter-offensive in the southern flank with fighting being reported in the northwestern part of Klishevka as well as Klishevka. The Russian forces are attacking at Klishevka. So not sure who is attacking what and who is actually defending. The Russians are attacking towards Ivanivsky though in two different directions from the east and from the north. So this is reported by the Ukrainian uh, uh, OSIN, Open Source Intelligence, Deep State UA. So this is the strategic situation in the southern flank of the Bakhmut front so um we moved into the northern flank uh there is fighting reported oops sorry uh over at this uh, Bodanivka region it's unclear where but most likely it's along the highway region 
as uh, the Russians are pushing southward towards Ivanovsky in this area here, west of Kromove. Ukrainians are counterattacking over at Bodanivka. And we have a, a video of the Ukrainian forces conduct doing exactly just that, uh, where a tank was uh, going down the road uh, between the Chasifia and Kromove. And it does some fire mission and then it tried to escape. However, towards the end of the video, uh, it did not really escape. It got actually hit by some kind of drone or something. So anyway, that's the situation over at the Bakhmut front. We move on to the Sivas front. So this is Sivas city. At the Sivas front, the Ukrainian forces is still being reported to be attacking below Horivka. However, I suspect that this is not the Bill Horivka that is attacking. It's the one at Luhansk. However, based on the reporting, the Russians did not mention Luhansk. They just say uh, Belogorovka. And uh, usually, as I mentioned in the previous rap, usually they will put a bracket or a comma saying that is this is a Luhansk one. So whatever it is, just take note that uh, this might not be the one. The fighting may actually just be over at Belogorovka. That the, uh, this one, the Russians are indeed attacking. So there is a possibility based on just now what I said, the Ukrainians are also counter-attacking in this area here. We're not sure. Uh, there is geolocation location of airstrikes. Uh, uh, the, these are close air or tactical fire support on, uh, for, the Ukraine, uh, for the Russian side. Uh, the Russian forces, as they push, the infantry are pushing. They, they conducted helicopter or airstrikes uh, with rocket, uh, rocket pods or you know, what not to support the offensive operation. So that's all over at this uh, Bilohorivka region. We move into the Kremina front. So this is Kremina city and uh, this is the Kremina front. At the Kremina front, the Ukrainian uh, Sersky offensive continues over this region here at Kerny, Yampolivka and Toske. There is no fighting being reported in the Serebransky forest tree. And the Russians are allegedly attacking over at, I think, Yampolivka. Yeah, at Yampolivka. So uh, that's the situation, the strategic situation over at the Kremina front. Uh, there is your location of... Uh, of uh, Russian forces under fire by the Ukrainians. There's no footage for this one um, based on that post and I'm not gonna hunt for it. So that's all for the criminal front. And uh, we move further north, nothing on the Svetovy front, we move into the Kupians front. So at the, this is the Kupians city and the, this is the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, the same continues with the Russians attacking over at Ivanivka as well as Sinkivka. Ukrainians counter-attacking at Sinkivka and they are attacking at Timkovka. This is exactly the same strategy situation as per yesterday's Sipra. So that's all from the Kupians front. And uh, and uh, over at the border region, there is actually a geolocated mortar attack by the Russians on Ukrainian forces at Turia. So Turia is actually this border town, a border village uh, that was attacked by the Russian forces. Oops, that's so, so so fast. And uh, this is actually at the Sumi region. So this is not actually at the Kaki front. This is actually at the Sumi region. We will continue to monitor and see how this goes. This is the famous uh, cross-border shelling, um, or you no, know, the shelling monks that goes across borders. So anyway, that's all from the uh, Sumi region, and that's it. This is the SIP wrap order summary for the day of 720 for the 13th of February. Thank you for watching. Press the like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next update.